Hi, I'm Miro. I'm a TNT champion. This is Rachel Ellerine, the queen of strong smile. I'm Eric Bischoff. Live events, all right? When the WWE comes on the holiday tour, when they come to Ireland. Or David Boy without hair braids. As a fan with braids, as a dog <laughs> without braids. And you. And you are watching. Are watching WrestleSlam. WrestleSlam. And you're watching WrestleSlam. Okay, guys, welcome to a brand new episode of Wrestling Slam. I'm joined by Phil and Michael, aka Mick, and we have a massive, massive show ahead. There's been a lot of talk all this week, and yet again, that feared trend on Twitter happened where we see more releases within WWE. Um, and yet again, some shocks, but not so much shocks. We know Phil is going to go on a rant, mm-hmm. and I know Mick is going to go on a massive rant as well. We've seen some big names drop yet again, which is absolutely crazy. So, Phil, I'm not going to beat around the bush. I'm going to go straight into it because no doubt all our, uh, all our followers will want us to talk about this and give our honest opinion. We're not going to hold back. So, Phil, is it an absolute motherfucking disgrace that we've seen all these names released? It's, it's, do you know what? I, I wasn't more pissed off. I was more sad at this kind of thing. Yeah. Um, Keith Lee is one that really annoyed me. Because the man had so much potential. He's got all uh, of it in the world. And, and I think there's been numerous times. To be fair, though, I will say this. I think there's been numerous times over the last eight, nine months where we thought he was going to get released, given they have really dropped the ball in general. Like. Was it like 18 months ago that he was missing for about eight weeks with some illness that he had? He says he had COVID and he got kind of long COVID and he was sick for ages. Yeah, but yeah. it's just kind of like, what are they doing? Because... Is there like over 100 wrestlers have been released in the last 16 months? Mm. And I think yeah. revenue was okay. up. I think they actually had a revenue profit, which is mad. So, like, you think of anything they, they made 256 million in the last quarter. Yeah. Uh, which is madness. A lot of quiche. Mick, what's your take on all this, look? And I think, I think one of the, um, the most strange ones is uh, Naya Jax, given the fact that, like, she made the company aware she had mental health issues. Um, and then she. She was vocal and she said how it went and she asked for an extension on, on a break. And then John, good old John, I always call him Langer like this. Um, he, um, he basically um, got on to her via email, I believe, which is mad, email. Not, not even a text, yeah. hey, you're gone. But it's mad, isn't it? Yeah, it's, cr- it's a crazy one. Like, it's, it's something, it's a, it's a hard one to wrap your head around. I'm still trying to, trying to come to terms with it. Um, what if, like, am I surprised by these releases? Not really, because I think, I think there might be, I think it might be, like, 10 to 15 wrestlers on the entire roster that you would consider safe, you know, the likes of Randy Orton's and Seth Rollins and the Edges and Roman Reigns and the Becky Lynch's, all these kind of guys, you, you know, you, these guys would, you, you would think they're all safe, but anyone outside of that, as we've seen over the last 16 to 18 months, nobody else is safe, you know? Um, there are some names on that list where I wasn't terribly surprised, like of, you know, Lince Dorado, for example. Like, you know, I, you, the writing, I think the writing was on the wall for a few of them. But the other ones were, you took away a lot of surprise, like BFAB, for example, who only signed a new contract for the, was it last week or the week before. Yeah. You know, Keith Lee, who's been used regularly on TV in the last little while, Karen Cross, who's just, who's just about to get a repackage, I believe. Yeah. These ones were all kind of very surprising to me. Um, to an extent, but I like as I said before, like if you're not in that, if you're in that, if you're not in that twelve to fifteen person bracket, then you you know you're you're not safe, you know. As we've seen, as we've seen across, as we see, as we've seen across the last kind of year and a half, you know. Um, it's sad. Um, it's what I would say though is that it's the timing of it is isn't as bad as we've seen before. You know, like wrestling is slightly like right, like wrestling is slightly on the comeback again. You know, so I can't see any issues with like the Keith Lee and these kind of guys uh, getting work elsewhere. But I do, I, I, I am concerned about the, the kind of lesser known guys and how how they'll land. Yeah, like I think it's interesting when you met, you know, B Fab Derek, for example. Now, at the end of the day, he's tied into a new contract, which means he will be paid. But that clearly means then um, he will not be able to wrestle probably until yeah. that contract's finished, you know what I mean? So, like, he could have a year or two left in his contract. Yeah. Which exactly. is bizarre. Do you know what I mean? I think Phil, I, I, like, I think it's a two-year contract for him, so, like, he's, he's signed yeah, a new contract, so, 
Like, what's he going to do? Like, you know what I mean? I think, I think it means he has to be bought out of the contract or maybe... they released. 90 days still. Do you think so? Oh, yeah, it is. Like, they're gone, they're gone. Like. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, like, the NXT guys only have 30 days because um, there's a good few of those released. Just yeah. speaking... Speaking of NXT, because I'd like to get your thoughts on that new new thing they're doing, um, where they're hiring wrestlers for six months. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm all for that, to be honest. Look, I think times have changed. I think um, it's a, it's economically, it's different. Like, you know, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on around the world, but I think um, it's just like Ring of Honor. They used to hire someone. I think Ring of Honor are actually going to do that. I think it, it, it just it makes for good TV because you never know who the fuck's going to turn up. Like, Yeah, it's so every... Better, I think it's also a better practice than... Signing, signing these guys that you're going to take a chance on for yeah. to like multiple year deals, and if it doesn't work out, they're just stuck on their books for a while, you know. So it makes business sense to them, to them, I suppose. Um, they made a massive, they, they made a massive mistake a couple of years ago by just signing every wrestler that had a half decent name in the world, basically, you know, yeah. and stop playing them, and you know, like signing on to like multiple, like to multiple year deals, and this is, you know, and. These releases that we're seeing now over the last couple of years, that's 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 the direct result of that, you know? Yeah, it's, it is a cliche, as you say, a cliche is to have that contract, oh, I'm signed and, you know, I've got the money contract and stuff. But, like, business perspective, you have to look at it. Like, and if I was a businessman, I'd rather have someone on a one-fee one, one fee appearance or maybe um, a six-month contract rather than having tied up for two, three years because I think it's fair to say right now what we're seeing is that we've seen for years and we've never really realised it in a sense, but... I suppose the last year too we have realized, but like rosters are really fucking overpacked, overpacked, oh, yeah. like massively overpacked. And then we yeah. complain then about like the wrestlers that don't get on the cards and the main events and this and that. So I suppose no, you look at it like and it's like they're trying to kind of eliminate all that. And, and when they eliminate that, then they're left with so many. So now we know what we can have. You have a bubble one and a bubble two. Bubble one would be like like to Randy Orton, Seth Rollins, all these guys that we're always going to see on the telly. Bubble two would be the kind of fellas like. Like, even Ricochet yesterday, I'd smacked him at a great match with Drew McIntyre. A guy that we thought was down and out, like. So, oh, yeah. that would be bubble two for me, Ricochet. A guy that has all the potential in the world, that is still signed, and that has got that match with Drew McIntyre last night, SmackDown, which we'll come to. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, maybe it's a good thing, business perspective. Maybe it's something that we'll all, have to, we'll all have to get used to. Like, we haven't got that hardcore championship anymore. We'd see 40 wrestlers wrestle for the hardcore championship. You know, twenty four seven belt is kind of I don't know. It's a thing that's kind of fizzing a little bit, like. But it's just interesting, and I will say I am surprised with some of the releases. I think, I mean, they tried to repackage Ember Moon there from NXT, and like Scarlett was very unlucky given the whole carrying cross thing. They brought him up to the main roster, and look, it didn't work out. Eva Marie, I'm looking forward to her Twitch rants. And I, I think she's the one that wants to go more than being fired by them. I, I just don't think she wants to wrestle in general. I think Eva Marie has such um such a brand and such um such a kind of like you know what I mean build around it that she's fine. I think she ended up doing TV or doing dancing with the stairs. I think that's her kind of pattern. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, she, yeah, yeah. she's fine without wrestling. She can you know what I mean. She likes to be kind of linked to it, but she's kind of smart in a sense. Like I remember being at WrestleCon with you, Phil, and we've seen the queue for Eva Marie. Yeah. So like you yeah. know she's fine. She's got that brand. But lads, do you reckon we're going to see um, some more releases? Look, there's talks of more releases coming in the days to come. There's talks of Johnny Gargano and, um, you know, he's, he's, you know what I mean? Yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of stuff. But Mick, what do you reckon? Are we, are we going to get another spring of surprises next week, maybe? Yeah, I think in the not too distant future, we're going to get uh, maybe another 18 to 20 of them, you know, and they can easily get rid of that amount and still have plenty, even too many wrestlers to, uh, for their products, you know. Um, just, on, just on a side note there, I thought that... I thought the craziest one out of all those releases was Harry Smith because he didn't even wrestle a match for him, yeah. you know, not live, not on, not on TV anyway. But in terms of uh, the next wrestlers to, co to come, you know, as, as I said, like nobody's safe. You know, you can easily see someone like uh, maybe a Bobby Roode or something like that. Or you could even see a bit a much bigger name like Ricochet, for example. You know, I know he's wrestled Drew McIntyre recently, like, but you know, Keith Lee was, re was wrestling Drew McIntyre not so long ago as well, and he got released. You know. Uh, so yeah, I definitely think there'll be at least maybe 10, 15, maybe even more wrestlers released in the next, uh, next couple of months. Yeah, you, you, you mentioned, sorry, you mentioned Bobby Roode. Bobby Roode yeah. is the name. I remember, I think it was Kurt Angle, there was someone had a tweet up last week saying if they really got the ball right with Bobby Roode, they reckon he will become a champion. Do you yeah. reckon there's still a bit of hope for Bobby Roode or is it just done and dusted? 
done and dusted. I think Vince has yeah. decided the guy is 45. So I don't think he's going to move forward him at all. Yeah. That's the, two, the new thing as well. We're now hiring is the hiring women. They want they don't want any women over 25. Yeah, they're looking for long term kind of goals rather than you know bringing back. Well, some... whole, if you look at Raw and SmackDown, a lot of the wrestlers are like 38 to like 46, 47. There's no young talent coming through. Yeah, well, my 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 interest will turn to the Royal Rumble. The Royal Rumble, I know, is something that we're going to see where it's you've got so many rot like there's, there's probably going to be no one in that roster now that will go into the Rumble unless they're extremely established in NXT. Or, you know, smack them and raw. So it'll be interesting, maybe in that perspective, that we won't have a bad entrant in the Royal Rumble. Mm. You know? But, uh, yeah, interesting. Phil, do you reckon there's going to be more releases? Look, I know we speak a lot in the group chats, all of us, with Wrestling Slam. And you reckon there's going to be a lot more? You reckon, do you, what do you reckon Johnny Gargano say for do you reckon he's out to go? Oh, he wants to leave. His contract's off next month, so it's Kyle O'Reilly. But the top of the contract, surely. Kyle O'Reilly, no, but Kyle O'Reilly. No, but Johnny, yes. Why do you think Johnny will sign that new contract? His wife has, and I think his wife is eight or nine months. He'd yeah. never leave his he'd never leave his pregnant wife behind. Well, see, if she's having that baby, say she's she's a couple of months pregnant now, and say like to have the baby, and then the time with the baby afterwards, like her contract could be up then, like you know what I mean? And she might yeah, just have to do something else. So it'll be a murder for like tacking on nine months because they weren't around. Yeah. Well, I'll do that. Are they really? Yeah, that's that's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. But like, it's going to be interesting. We've what? seen all the treats said about Tony Khan behind the tree, and he's looking, he's peeping out. <laughs> you know, I love all them little memes, like where he's peeping out, like, and he's like, uh, mm, who, who do we have there? <laughs> who would be yeah. more about the NXT UK being absolutely closed down in the next year? I reckon they might close that brand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It just depends on how much the brand is costing them to run. Obviously, look, they have. Um, we've seen that. Obviously, they're on the network and stuff. Um, like they have some fairly good stars on that brand, like Eva Valkyrie. Do you know what I mean? Um, Jenny, yeah, Ginny. There's yeah. there's so many good names. And I like. Do you reckon it's just a case they might move them up to NXT 2.0? They'll come to America or don't come to America. Maybe it's cheaper to have them in America. Uh, it's probably cheaper to have them in America because they have to rent buildings and all that kind of stuff over in the UK, but. Water is definitely going to move. Um, Kaylee Ray has moved, and I'm worried about Kaylee Ray because I think she's only got a few months to prove herself. Yeah, but she is. She is all around. She's pretty good. Like I've seen her wrestle at OTT. Um, yeah. so yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. So you reckon a full fact that NXT UK will perhaps fall yeah. in the next one months? Eighteen months. One year to eighteen months. They have. Take. I heard the numbers are really really bad. Yeah. yeah, on the network. Yeah, like yeah, the views have great. Less than ten thousand. Yeah, no, it's gonna be, it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens. It's, no. it's just Nick, Nick Khan is looking for anything and everything to get rid of that that doesn't create money. Yeah, no, I completely understand. Just before we move to to SmackDown, lads, and obviously we'll we'll mention Raw and uh, All Elite Rampage. Just want to mention that tickets are now on sale for OTT Wrestling. Absolute madness. At the KFR Centre Dublin, Saturday, December 4th. Uh, tickets are available at Eventbrite. Um, .ie doors open at 6 p.m. Yeah, 6 p.m. The bell is 7 p.m. And look, as I said, OTT, the guys are incredible there. So make sure you get behind OTT in Dublin. Um, they put some great shows. Some better news for all of us Cork onions. Yes, December 3rd. The Circus Factory Cork tickets on sale soon. Doors 7 p.m. The bell is 8 p.m. This event is strictly over 18s. Phoenix Wrestling, not far from home, back in Cork City, back in the Circus Factory. If you've not been to the Circus Factory, guys, it is incredible. It's a place where you can just chill out. I know you can beat a couple of cans, Dutch gold, you know, whatever you want to have. Um, and tickets will be on sale soon, and we'll have all the information via the Wrestle Slam Twitter page. And on Facebook, and I do believe all the team should be in attendance, providing that you know Mick is not in the gig and he's because I know Mick is always on tours and doing stuff, but we'll all be there. Uh, we had a great time in Limerick recently as well with uh, Phoenix Wrestling, where uh, the quiz release happened in ring with Seth Smart Martina. We also interviewed Martina in the ring as well. Um, we got the odd chant down there who the fuck is that guy? 
And, you know, it was good. It was good. I was expecting it to be really good. But look, it went down really well. So I'll be thanks to Phoenix Wrestling uh, for having us in Limerick. And there's been more Limerick dates announced quite soon as well. So, lads, I'm going to switch to SmackDown. Now, I know it only happened last night. But look, it is good to have results and, you know, have things happening. Um, obviously, I spoke about Drew McIntyre versus Ricochet. Uh, like that, that match with Ricochet, Phil, was incredible. It was actually a very good match. And we're seeing perhaps uh, the bloodline against the New Day, something's actually brewing for the looks of it, like, you know what I mean? I think we spoke about, obviously, uh, King Woods, perhaps get a title shot. Um, you know, what was your take on SmackDown at the moment? It's, it's, it's pretty good, but last night was actually interesting. I like it. It was good. Uh, in, in, I reckon we're going to get the New Day and the Bloodline at Survivor Series. Yeah. Uh, it would be so much better if they didn't do it three or four weeks back on Raw on free TV. Yeah, yeah, but it'll but, be um, it will be good if it happens, though. Oh, it'll be very good, It'll be brilliant. I prefer to see it than Range and Biggie, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, no, I would as well. I think, like, you know what I mean? I think the New Day are probably one of the hottest brands in all of wrestling. You know what I mean? They've been active now for so long. You know, Biggie being a champion, King Woods, you know, Corby doing what he's done. Mick, what's your take on the New Day? Do you think they will have a good feud with the with the Bloodline? Oh yeah, I mean, if you look at if you, if you look down through the years at the work that the Usos and the New Day have done, you know, you you're guaranteed you're guaranteed results when they're involved, you know. So, add you know, adding adding Roman Reigns, who's who's improved year on year on year in the ring, then you're 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 guaranteed to have a great to have a great match and a great and a great angle, you know. Um, with with Survivor Series around the corner and with them not really announcing really much for it, um, it that this would look this would look like a, a great lead for Survivor Series, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I think it'd be a great I think it'd be a great match. Um, I'm just a bit, I'm a bit worried about the fact that they haven't released they haven't, There's been such a lack of builds for Survivor Series. You know, I mean, it's what two weeks away now. Yeah. You know, and just, we still know that we know we know pretty much nothing about it, like which is a bit of a concern. Yeah, and I was just going to touch on that point. Like, it's a very good point there, Mick. Like, why do you reckon, Phil, there's no kind of momentum going into to this pay-per-view? Like, we were always seeing... Uh, like, if you remember back in our younger days, guys, when we were in school and stuff, and like, that was religious that we'd stay up on a Sunday night and, you know, went to school Monday morning with a big head on us and we don't want to go to school, Mum and Dad. But, like, it's... Um, you know what I mean? There's obviously... We're seeing a lot of shit happening. Is, is the releases taken away from the pay-per-view? Is it just the way they're doing it? Like... We don't really see things. Sometimes we don't even know what matches are happening. We're looking prior, oh, yeah. you know, 24 yeah. hours prior. Who's on that card? Like, back yeah. in the day, we had great storylines, you know what I mean? But what, what's going on? Why do you reckon they're kind of losing the ball with the momentum going into a pay-per-view? Bit of everything. I think it's laziness, to be honest with you. Yeah. I think they are now at the point where it's like, sure, they're paying their $10 a month for the network. Like, they're, we're not trying to get this $50 off them anymore. Um when pay views were forty nine ninety nine or something like that, but now they're only paying ninety nine, so it's just kind of. I think that's a lot of it is that. Yeah, that's a good point. I think you're right. I think as you remember when we were growing up, you'd see that thing pop up in the sky. We all had our black boxes back in the day, yeah. uh, the tap black box, and you'd pop Royal Rumble two thousand or ninety nine, and you, ah oh, shit, you know what I mean? I have to make sure that channel's there and stuff like. But yeah, you're right. I think maybe that is it. That's a very good point. Um. Speaking of SmackDown, yet again, back into it, we've seen uh, Shayna, obviously, you know, versus Naomi, um, which is interesting. Obviously, Sonya Deville kind of restarted that match. Kind of more of a, I suppose, a little glitch in the sense of they're trying to get people talking and talking about things that, you know what I mean? Why, why did that happen? It's kind of, like, it's... Um, do you think they've lost the ball with Shayna? It's more of it. I think, I think, look, when you look at stuff, and like we look at Naomi, Naomi's obviously, you know what I mean, she's a bright star. I thought she would have been a champion. Um, but like, do you think they're dropping the ball a small bit? Um, it's the stuff starts with her that I don't like. Yeah, yeah. I, I I would have had her win the the, uh, the Queen's crown. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it looked like she was dead. On, she was bang on for it. Like, I'm yeah. convinced. I'm convinced that she wasn't allowed over there because she's LGBTQ. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Um, yeah. it's just weird that if like it's just weird that if they knew that they weren't gonna. Uh, have her win it, then why did they book her so strong throughout the tournament? Then you know, it was strange, it was a strange one, yeah. And speaking of women, like Shatsy, really, really was impressed with me. Um, she has the, everything, she has absolutely everything, she does, like you know what I mean. And, and 
like the whole, you know, she wants to run over Sasha Banks. I think she has everything to be yeah. an absolute star. Well, and she's after dropping the tank now, which is great because I, it's just little things like they need, she needs to work now like a heel as well when she starts fighting. So are we going to see Team Sasha versus Team Shotzi? Yeah, I hope we do. I hope we do. That'd be a great one. Um, Drew McIntyre versus Ricochet, lads. What a match. What a great match. Very oh, good the match. finish was outstanding. Yeah. He was I, lucky he wasn't killed. Yeah, but I just think I'd say backstage, I'd say Vince actually acknowledged that match. Like, I'm, I'm glad I didn't fire you, Ricochet. You, you've got the <laughs> How long have you been here? You look new. You look fresh. I've been here about three, four years, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, it's, um, like Ricochet has all that. His entrance, you know what I mean? I think everything about Ricochet is just, you know. Are they trying to like team up with Ali? What's the story with that? Well, I don't know, man. It's they, they, could, they, could, they could put two of them together and they could be, they could, they, they could put them together as a tag team just to have them feud in a couple of months, like, you know, because they love, they love that, you know? Yeah. It would be brilliant. Yeah, the fucking uh, Mansoor team, in which Cesaro. Yeah, I think that yeah. that'd be a good feud, though. I'm telling you, Ali and Ricochet. Oh yeah. yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? They'd have to do something like you know what I mean. Like we've seen, obviously the the Viking Raiders are hanging in there, lads. They really are hanging in there. They're, Just uh, a move. Just a move. Yeah, they defeated Happy Corbin and Mark Cap Moss uh, via countdown, but they're hanging in there. Look, we we didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, they're very much loved across the world. But, um, yeah, they're just about hanging in there. They're getting the TV time. Obviously, they're in good matches. They're still getting the wins. Um, so, all the best to them. Uh, King Woods defeated Jimmy Uso. We've seen what happened afterwards. So, we're obviously setting up for that main event. Um, obviously, the Uso's versus the bloodline. But the thing is, like, they can't progress it next week because Reigns... Is there a SmackDown in the UK, is it? Next week? Or not? I don't think so. I think it's just the live shows. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think it's just the live shows. Um, obviously, Sammy Zayn was backstage, offers uh, Elias some advice. Um, Sammy, lads, I, I think Sammy needs another push. I really do. I think like his stock is still huge, in my opinion. I think he's great. I think they should have kept that conspiracy thing going, though. That conspiracy thing was fucking awesome. I'm going to expose everybody. Yeah. I think they should have kept that going. Um, yeah, he was, when he was making that documentary and everything, it was, uh, that was very good. It was um, so good. It was savage. I think they're yeah. really good ones there. Like, uh, like you, you know, with, with these releases that come up every couple of months, like, you know, like, it seems to be the narrative that, like, people want them all, like, everybody, at least, so, at least everybody, at least some, somewhere, at least, at least one of those wrestlers is signed with AEW. But, like, out of the entire main roster of WWE, there's only about five guys that I would actually sign to AEW, the likes of, like, Finn, uh, Finn Balor, um, Finn Balor, AJ Styles, but two two of the top ones for me would be Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, you know, yeah. because I think I, I think El Generico in AEW would be awesome, you know. Um, so I like I I I to answer your question, I actually can't think. I don't think you'll get another serious push at all because I think I I think um was is Kevin Owens is um his contract's up yeah. is it in the new year I think I think Sami he Sami Zayn before him is Sami Zayn before him is it. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, so and they've got a lot of friends over in AEW. So I think the, you know, I think the end could be not the end could be nice for both of them. I think, um, I hope so because I think that I think of everybody in WWE, I think Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn would be top of the list for AEW. They were actually okay. incredible, Mick. Weren't they? I think like the fight yeah. forever kind of thing when they had that feud. And oh man, they're like yeah. If you could like you could, like to them in the ring like. You know, it's just a match like any Booker can just rely on. You know, it's like Bret Hart and Sean. You know, it's just something you can absolutely rely on. It's gonna be top notch every single time. You know. Yeah. yeah. It would have been nice to see Sammy win the Universal Championship, though. Or, uh, yeah, there was, a, there was a point. There was a point a couple of years ago where I felt it was his time to win the Rumble. Hmm. You know, it was just after he, it was after he got called up and after he came back from that big injury he had after he got called up. You know, yeah. around that time, like it was just his time to win the Rumble and it just didn't happen for him. You know. Yeah, I'd say he was a thought, though. I'd say it was on that list. I'd say if there was three names on the list, like you remember Rusev as well. Rusev yeah. was one of them guys that, you know, could have potentially won it. But, yeah, no, I completely agree. I absolutely love Sammy, and I hope, I hope to God we see him in Ireland soon. We know there's a, a big announcement pending for Cork, a location in Cork that we all know quite well. 
I'm not going to say no more, but there is a big star coming, so we're going to be interested to see who it is. If it's a current star, a guy that's kind of out in the break, a legend. Uh, but do stay tuned. As soon as we know, you'll know, guys. Um, I'm going to switch quickly to uh, AEW, guys. Rampage. That man again, Brian Danielson, as active as ever, Phil. Always mm-hmm. wants a match. Looks great. Obviously fought at the uh, bows. What do you reckon of the match? It was a very good match. Yeah. Um, Brian wants to prove himself with all these matches. The only thing I hated about this was the John Lawrence joke at before the match. Yeah. 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 Oh, my love. The, 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 the Matt Caster stick is very hit and miss. So, like, when it hits, it hits, but when it misses, it's like, oh, gee, that's just so on the nose, you know? Um, I thought, I thought, I thought, I thought um, Bowens looked really, really good in this match. I don't know if it was because he's a really good worker or because Daniel, uh, Brian Denson makes everybody look good. But, uh, he yeah, he was, it was a great match, uh, to be fair. I wasn't yeah. expecting it to be that good, to be honest. Yeah, yeah he's definitely yeah. one of the best of all time. Like he oh, has, 100%. Top five. It's, it's Easy top five. Yeah, it's a clear as day that he wants to wrestle. He wants to stay active. Maybe it's just his cure. Maybe like some people like to go for a walk. Some people like to go to the same coffee shop every day to keep that routine. Maybe Brian just wants to wrestle. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, He's, I I'm just going to say, please, Daniel Brian, let Miro beat you next week. Yeah, I think I think he's fair enough that way. I think he he's he really with Kobe lads. It was his idea to let Kobe win that championship at WrestleMania. I think Brian knows what's best for business as well. That that be such a business man move as well. Like like any time a wrestler gets injured or can't do something, a lot of times in they need the replacement to like win the whole thing. You ever notice that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, but I I I I'm, I'm agreeing with Phil. I think Miro should beat uh, Brian Danielson. Um, I just think if Hamman wins the AW title, which I think he will. Um, the most the, mo- the most obvious first opponent for him would be uh, a, a big strong heel, you yeah. know. And Nero is definitely that. Agree, hundred uh, percent. We see the back backstage segment. Uh, when you see the name MGF, guys, you know it's going to be absolute gold. Obviously, FTR over there and Andred. Um, obviously, something building up yet again. Look, they're all big superstars. Um, there was rumors that FTR were going to leave there recently, but I'd say I was just uh, an old fake trend. But right. it. Um, Encouraging things ahead. Look, there's, there's so many good feuds. You know what I mean? We've seen, obviously, Punk call out Eddie Kingston. Um, Phil, what's your take on Punk and Eddie Kingston? Are you liking this little feud and this little beef? I watched it until last night. Yeah. Uh, that was... Pr- that's what they should be doing every week. I just don't understand why he was on Rampage and not on Dynamite. Yeah. I suppose it's just trying to build ratings for both brands, you know? Yeah. Exactly yeah Punk right, all, all Punk stuff on Rampage. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I, I agree. I agree 100%. Um, like, do you think Punk is, you know, obviously, look, he's there most weeks, to be fair. Like, you know what I mean? Do you think he's uh, he's holding up? Do you think he's he's fulfilling the fix of the wrestling fan when it comes to seeing Punk on our screens? I was getting kind of bored of these Um, But last night, I want more of, really. That was Eddie Kingston, like we've talked about him before, is such an underrated wrestler. Yeah. Yeah. Talked on so much before. Um, I know he's not going to beat him, but like he needs to put on a match that will be remembered, I suppose, by fans. No, I agree. I agree. Like, Mick, what's your take on Punk and Eddie Kingston? Look, they're both kind of big guys. You know what I mean? They're um, yeah. like obviously Punk is iconic. We we see him come back. He's he's been kind of there since he came back. It's not just his one appearance job. Um, but like Eddie Kingston, obviously making a bit of noise at the moment too. It's pretty good to see you. Yeah, I don't like this feud, to be honest. Um. I used to tell you, like, be interrupting someone's interview is a really lame excuse to be in a, to be in a feud, you know? Yeah. And it kind of makes CM Punk look a bit silly, to be honest. Like, where he just, like, his pet peeve in life is being interrupted, like, you know? So, like, it's just weird, I think. Uh, I also think Eddie Kingston is a bit of, a, bit of an odd uh, pick for an opponent for him as well, because yeah. everybody loves Eddie Kingston. You know, he gets massive pops anytime he, anytime he comes out, you know? and like, like CM Punk's supposed to be a face, and Eddie Kingston is treated like a face by the fans. And you have CM Punk coming out calling him a bum, which gets CM Punk, uh, who's supposed to be a face, gives him booze. You know, it's just a weird, it's just a, it's a weird angle that way. Like, you know, um, it's it's a, it's a, it's a it's a lame angle, I think as well. Um, I think it'll, it'll be it's 
I think they might have just been stuck for something for CM Punk to do for the full gear. Yeah. Um, so, you know, having a quick feud with Eddie Kingston, might, they probably thought that was a very, uh, quick, to, a very quick solution to that. Yeah. Um, I think in, in regards to CM Punk's performances on, on, in, in wrestling so far, I think he's very much on a curve to getting back to some kind of, some kind of state where he used to be. I, think, I don't think he's there yet. I think we've seen is that we've seen a few matches that his cardio hasn't been brilliant, particularly in his first match. He's getting a bit better at it now, like you know. Yeah. Um, I think he, at times he's at time at times he kind of he gets a little bit stuck on the mic a little bit just because you know he's been away for seven years, you know. Um, and and AEW don't really do for the script promo thing, so I think he's just on a little bit of a curve and trying to get back to where he was, some kind of sense of where he used to be in terms of both in the ring and on the mic. I think they're just allowing him time to do that before launching him into anything else a bit more serious. No, well, completely love that take, and it's good to see him back. Look, I know he was away for oh, yeah. some, but I'm happy to see him back, and you know, completely spot on with the take with uh, the feud. I, I'm not really for the feud. I think there's better feuds there. Um, but yeah, it, it is what it is, I suppose. Um, Red Velvet obviously defeated the Bunny. We know um, there was an involvement, I suppose, Jay Cargill's, you know, she's always kind of around ringside yeah. kind of trying to do distractions and stuff. But I suppose Jade has a massive future. I know Liz is a massive fan of Jade. Um, I would love to see uh, the Liz and Jade quiz. The quiz with Liz with Jade featuring on that. That would be pretty good. Um, obviously, main event, guys, Adam Cole versus uh, John Silver. Um, Adam Cole main event in Rampage. Phil, that's not a surprise, really, is it? No, oh, it was. It was actually very good, and I really love this budge stuff. It's quite funny. Yeah. Uh, I don't watch enough of the being the elite these days. I used to always watch it. Yeah. Why? Uh, why, why don't you watch it much? Of you just kind of do you think they've? Kind of know, you know what it is? A lot of things on in my head all over the place, and I just be like completely forget the shows. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that brand is hotter now than it was back in the day? Like, if you remember before All Elite. No, I think they were on fire when we were in Dublin. That yeah, was... but they were fucking like, I'd say stock wise alone, I think they sort of, they sort of their merchandise before the team even started, did they? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That yeah. year we were in Dublin was the year that they were absolutely on fire. Yeah. Uh... I told you I met Matt Jackson after that. We were in, I was in Starbucks in uh, New <laughs> Orleans. And Matt Jackson tapped me on the back. And I looked yeah. back. He's like, you're the guy from Dublin. You're the guy that... <sighs> I swear, I could not believe this. Like, he's like, you are the guy from Dublin, aren't you? And I was like, yeah. He's like, we had you in the, the dressing room with, uh, with Kenny Omega and Marty Scurll. I was like, yeah. He's like, I knew I knew your face. And I was like, how the fuck did you remember me? Like, He's like, well, we, we seen the interview afterwards. And he was like, yeah, it was pretty awesome. He goes, well, that Dublin night was mad. He's like, me and Kenny yeah. and... and the, the team always talk about that trip to Dublin with OTT. He's like, we, we've got to do that again. Like, these guys are so alert. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not even fucking funny. Like, it's it's mad. Yeah. It's like, it's the stuff dreams are made of. Like, get a tap on the back of Starbucks at WrestleCon and Matt Jackson's behind you. You're the guy from Dublin. And, like, he knew, like, I, he didn't say, you know, it was mad. I, I'll fucking, yeah, I just love the young bucks. I think, look, they're incredible. I like the way they dress, Phil. They're really yeah. are funky as fuck, like, do you know what I mean? Speaking of the Young Bucks, they announced the six man for the full yeah. gear. Do you want to give it the honours? That's why I said a touch best. Yeah, with Christian and Lucha Soros versus the end of Super Clip. Yeah. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. False count anywhere. False count anywhere. Yeah. Um, It'll be a yeah, it's not, it's not bad at all. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree, hundred percent, hundred percent. So yeah, it's it's. Uh, I suppose Rampage has been good. Uh, Phil, do you want to quickly run through Raw? Give a rating, two out of ten. Rating, uh, three out of ten. Three out of ten. Because Becky actually had an okay match, to be fair. Um, it's just it's too repetitive, too samey, nothing happening. Even with the new talent gone there, it's still. Pretty poor. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I completely understand. Uh, make sure you get a chance no, to watch Raw. Which? Did you get a chance to watch Raw, sorry. Are you, are you... Uh, no, I didn't get a chance to watch Raw. And even if I had the chance to watch Raw, I probably wouldn't watch it because I probably wouldn't miss anything, you know, because nothing happens on it, you know. Completely uh, 
Yeah, like like WWE is like WWE at the moment, like well not even at the moment for the last good while now. It's just like you can miss a couple of weeks of TV and within like a half hour of watching the next week you're you're caught up like because so little happens you know um a lot, like it's so a, a lot of it's so samey like you're guaranteed if there's five matches on, on five matches on the night you know at three of them are going to be disqualifications or something you know and it's just there's a lack of creativity in the booking of the show itself and it just makes it a very hard watch like especially when raw is three hours long you know yeah, no, I know completely. I, I, I rarely ever watch it, do you know what I mean? So it's just telling me I try and catch the highlights. Um, but yeah, it's it's been an interesting week via WWE, that's for sure. I'm going to switch quickly, that's just before we go to Impact. Obviously, Turn of Point, live November 20th. Uh, Phil Mickey James versus uh, Mercedes Martinez. Obviously, we know mm-hmm. the, the inspiration will take on DK. I'm actually looking forward to that match. I think that's a great booking for Turn of Point. Um, obviously, Trey Miguel. Um, Leto Kid, that's going to be a good match as well, but there'll be a lot more announced in due yeah. course. Impact is obviously uh, on an upfield, there's no doubt about that. Moose as champion finally. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think I just think they need to get a better TV deal and get out of that little dingy circle where their entrance is. It just looks really, really like. Cliche. Yeah, people won't watch it because it just doesn't look proper. Yeah, it's a pity they don't get back to the old team they set up, you know what I mean? That's why I was saying to Joe the last time they should go back to the old arena. Where was that in Los you Angeles, know? wasn't it? Orlando, wasn't it? Orlando, sorry, yeah. 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 They should go back there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's still there, like. Yeah. The biggest news was that Petey Williams got a WWE tryout. Um, yeah. Oh, he's, good. oh he's, good. he's looking to be a producer there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. I like. I I, I always like Petey Williams. Like, because you know, that was the first time I ever saw uh, a destroyer was his one, and he, I'm convinced his one is still the best destroyer. It is the best. Uh, so you, it's a massive, massive fan of Petey Williams. I hope he, I hope he gets what he wants. Yeah. Come on, Petey. I always think of Petey. Yeah. Do you remember that? Um, do you remember that angle he did with Scott Steiner, and it was like he was like Maple Leaf Muscle. He was like a little, is it a sidekick? <laughs> yeah. That was amazing. Was of course, it was amazing. Anything Scott Steiner does is amazing. <laughs> And I'm all for PD working in uh, in WWE for sure. Um, yeah. That's yet again. It's been a great show. Look, there's been a lot to talk about. We we squeezed in so much within the 40 odd minutes that we had. So obviously the breaking news. Obviously a lot more releases in WWE. Maybe more to come. Obviously AEW still doing their thing. Uh, Impact is looking great for a uh, turning point and leading up to that. Uh, don't forget, guys, to get your tickets for OTT Wrestling on Phoenix Wrestling Cork. We mentioned that in the show. Uh, already December, two dates, Dublin and Cork. So Cork and Dublin, be ready. Some big stuff happening. Uh, from myself, Jerry, from Phil and from Mick, we wish you all a great weekend. Uh, we know Halloween was last weekend, but look, Christmas is fast approaching. We'll have news coming very soon. We're trying to sort those stuff with the Maco Casino. Obviously, that's look, given the fact there's still guidelines, we cannot stay open past four o'clock at this moment. So that's why we have not done the live event just yet. But look, we will be back. We're in full effect. Thank you to everyone that tunes in. We love you all to bits, and we will see you next week. And there'll be a couple of features dropping in the meantime on the YouTube and Instagram and Twitter pages. God bless, guys. Have a good one. See you soon.